nature taking over. Well, at least that <laughs> that's where we're going. Are you hiking flat or are you hiking with a bit of uh Um we get flat to start but Let's go skateboarding with Kevin and Andreas. Alright. Here we are, Andres. Tell the people what we're doing today. We are hiking up to the top of Seventh Heaven on this blundery, blustery, wintry day. And what are these things on our on our hooves here? We are using we are utilizing split boards today. Boards that split into skis so that when we hike up the mountain, we have all of the surface area under our feet. Alright, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Andreas, and today we are doing a splitboarding hike up to the top of Black Ohm. Hopefully we find some nice fresh powder lines. Today I am hiking with my buddy Kevin. You! What's up guys? Beautiful day for a hike. So to be out here, it should be a, a good time. Yeah, and we're getting some nice fresh snow too, so let's hope that we get some good tracks. Yeah, Kevin was up here the other day with TJ. They found some awesome powder stashes on the backside of where the Horseman T-Bar is. So we're gonna go check it out, see if we can't find some nice powder laps. guys we're almost at the top it's been a pretty uh, cruisy hike only maybe 45 minutes today both Kevin and I are on our Jones split boards today really like the Jones split boards I feel like if you're gonna invest in a company for a split board Jones really knows what they're doing if you guys have ever seen uh, deeper further or higher they're all Jeremy Jones touring movies where he goes split boarding into the backcountry and just accesses wicked terrain based solely off of split boarding. I also really like the Jones split boards because they have a mellow magma traction on the inside edge which really helps grip the two pieces together. So you get a nice connectivity. We're getting a little bit of fresh snow and uh, the visibility is kind of half and half depending on where we are. My goggles are fogging up a little bit so it's hard for me to tell at the moment. <laughs> Yeah! Dude, you look like you're in some type of exercise video. The hills are alive with the sound of music! Whew. Andreas, do you have any advice for people out there looking to possibly pick up a splitboard setup? Yeah, Kevin, well, a splitboard setup is a big investment, you know? People think that it's just the splitboard and the bindings. But in reality, you also have to get skins, poles, probes, a shovel, a beacon, a backpack to carry it all. So it's a bit, a bit of an investment. I would say that if you're making the commitment to yourself from an athletic standpoint, you know, you're gonna go out and make sure that you use this stuff. It's definitely worth it because it lasts like 10 years. But if you're gonna go less than five times in a season, it might be easier to rent a split board package first and definitely start off by taking an AST course. Nice, good yeah. advice, man. Yeah, I, I totally agree, guys. It's quite the investment, but if it's something that you're interested in, you think you're passionate about, maybe try it out first with a rental and a course, and then, you know, you can decide from there. All right, guys, so here we are. We're at the top of Black Home. I've just hiked up with Kevin from Snowboard Pro Camp. What's up, guys? And uh, yeah, we are in the midst of a blizzard. It is snowing. We've got a potentiality of 10 centimeters of more snow throughout the day. And we're gonna head down. I don't know if you guys can see it, but down the backside here of Horseman T-Bar, there's some good snow. Kevin and TJ were actually exploring this section a couple days ago. So hopefully we find some really awesome turns. We get some deep snow and we're just going to take it easy because this is like our main first split boarding adventure of the season. So don't want to take anything too hard. Don't want to hurt ourselves. You ready, man? Yeah, the power's here in my books. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, guys. And if you haven't noticed, I've uh, joined the helmet team. So I'm now wearing a helmet. 
definitely trying to be a little bit more responsible, go on that safety side, and I definitely want to advocate helmets to, you know, all of the viewers out there. It's really irresponsible if you don't wear a helmet, so make sure you got one of these suckers. I'm now on board. Andreas, before we drop in, I just want to give you huge props for the helmet, man. Yeah, man, what do you think? <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> Dude, I'm proud of you, man. You've, uh, you're changed. You're I'm a changed, man. I got a helmet. I'm going to be a little bit more safe from now on. And it's all thanks to Kevin's careful prodding. He has, uh, he has encouraged me to be more safe on behalf of all of our uh, youngster viewers out there. Want to set a good example, so I'm down to set a good example. Nice, dude. Yeah. Let's get this. Guys, I also picked up a new helmet as well. I got the Giro Ledge helmet, and uh, it's feeling pretty good. This is going to be the first try with the new helmet. Let's yeah, guys, it. and I just picked up the new Smith Code MIPS. So the code is kind of like a Smith Maze, but it has a nice tightening BOA system on the back to really articulate to the occipital bone. And it's got choroid in it, so it makes it super lightweight, so I don't feel like I'm wearing a big bulky helmet. Nice. Oh man guys, super fun to be out here. 
it is uh, pretty frosty, pretty cold, and uh, the visibility is not great. It's hard to catch those quick undulations under your foot, but all things considered, a lot of fun to be riding in some deeper snow. wide open can make those like big fast like carving powder carving turns so that was a blast i loved it yeah. pretty tricky as far as the visibility is concerned though everything looks the same yeah the vis is pretty low so not qu quite riding at 100 probably taking it down to about 80 just because of that poor visibility yeah staying pretty chill pretty chill all right so we've decided to go for a second hike We've decided to head up this time to the Showcase T-Bar. So the T-Bar we, we rode beside last time was called the Horseman. This time we're going up to Showcase. And the great thing about that area is there is lots of wide open and clear space where we don't have to worry too much about rocks or obstacles or crevasses. It should just be a big open powder field to ride down. So that's perfect for these early season conditions especially with the daylight today with low visibility. It'll be nice to not have to worry too much about what's ahead of us. We've got about a 20 minute hike to go and then it should be some more great turns up here. And then it should take us maybe 30 minutes to ride back down the mountain. Right, guys we just made it up to the top of our second hike first we came down the uh, back side of the Horstman t-bar and we did a little session down there and now we've gone up showcase t-bar so we've hiked the entire way from down there off to my right here you can see Kevin how was that hike Kev it was uh, pretty tough um, I think the thing that makes those kinds of hike the hikes the most difficult is actually all that wind so the wind kind of, the wind blowing you off your trail, making it difficult to see, but feels like this hike is paying off. Yeah, man. I took my lenses out just cause I couldn't see anything. I kept fogging up and uh, the wind was really bad at one point. I felt like I was in a full blown Arctic circle kind of adventure. A polar vortex. A polar vortex. All right, guys, Andreas, we've made it to the top of this hike. How was that? That was, it was pretty difficult, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a grueling hike, Kevin, and there was a lot of wind and the visibility is not great up here. So you're kind of just sort of pointing your skis up the top of the hill and walking up. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to do that same thing on the way down, just point it. I'm thinking maybe aim for some of those rocks to give us a little bit of definition on the ride down. Yeah, get some lip. Yeah, I feel like, you know, we'll, we'll take it at maybe 80% and into the abyss. Yeah, it's man, I'm super excited to hit up this fresh snow. It's definitely the best snow that I've seen all year. The conditions that we're about to embark upon should be pretty dang good. So yeah. I'm really excited. Sick, man, it's gonna pay off, dude. I'm a little bit less inclined to go over there just in case there's some avi debris. All right. Cause I've seen it there in the past, you know?
I was off of it. <laughs> That's the same one I had. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't fly right into you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Watch out for Abby debris. I definitely saw some good flex coming from that board. Oh yeah, this thing's super flexy. Uh, okay. <coughs> wow. Oh my god, guys, it's so hard to tell what kind of surface you're on. All right guys, we're about halfway down. We're still seeing some good snow, but there's also a few rocks underfoot that we have to be careful about. It's hard to see them, so you're almost looking for like a little bit of a shadow indentation in the snow. We do have to also start making our way, being a little bit quicker, because uh, it's getting dark out and we don't want to be on the hill in the dark. So let's get things a moving. No. 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 No, 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 no. 
Down to zigzag we go. All right, guys. So we made it back down the mountain. It was definitely a fun, uh, a fun adventure out. We kind of almost waited too late into the afternoon, so it started to get dark. Visibility got a little bit low, and uh, yeah, we ran into a little bit of avalanche debris. I definitely hit a little bit of a chundery spot, went for a sail, but all things considered, I'm all good, not a scratch, so. Nice, man, yeah, that avalanche debris, guys, if you're ever snowboarding in conditions where you can't see 100%, there is always a chance of there being those big ice chunks that are sometimes in the lane that you're snowboarding down, so. I think that was our biggest lesson from today, is be cautious of the avalanche debris. Yeah guys, definitely when you're riding terrain like that, I was giving it maybe only 80% of my true capability, just because I didn't want to push it too hard and uh, end up wiping out and hitting a rock or something. So definitely some chill riding today, a little bit more easy going than normal. That's just for safety's sake, just to make sure that we don't get into uh, any hairy situations, especially not before Japan. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Early season still, but we definitely we pushed it today. We were on a we were just stepping up the level. Yeah, first split of the season. <laughs> I would say it was successful. Thanks man, thanks for coming along. Yeah, thanks Andreas. <laughs> Always an adventure with Kevin. <laughs> Always a hike. <laughs> Sick dude. Cool. Thanks man. Yeah, I hit that Avi debris full on, Kevin, and <laughs> went for a little bit of a sail, so I think we were lucky to get out as uh, clean as we did. We did, we got a clean man <laughs> and big props for the helmet, dude. You, you're on the helmet cruise. I'm on the helmet seat. train, man. Awesome. Safety first. 